so I thought I'd perfected the evolutionary process. But then I saw these hairy potatoes and realized I need to step up my game. It does give me a creature cap of 6,600 things, so I'm just going to add a few more numbers to that and 50,000 it is. And uh, this is a pretty good start. Maybe we shouldn't have messed with the numbers so much. I had no idea life was so complicated. So to make sure everything's being fit and strong, we're going to double the amount of gravity. That should be good enough to get us rolling. Or at least cover one of these potatoes in spikes and unleash it on the world. Look at that, they're thriving. <coughs> I bet a creature without legs really loves the extra gravity. Now, if watching these things doesn't make you uncomfortable, you should be ashamed of yourself. So far they do seem to be able to breathe, so at least I've gotten something right so far. If everything hasn't come crashing down within the first 5 minutes, I consider it a success. And somehow, these little guys are currently the dominant species. So let's go ahead and create a nursery, that way we can use artificial selection to redesign its appearance and personality. The nursery will encourage creatures similar to the target to breed, while humanely killing off the rest. Okay, here we go. Now we can start to mess with how my creature works. First of all, it needs to be at least three times bigger. And then things are going to get really weird, as we cover it in a skin that looks like something like that chair in your grandma's house. But also, if there's a chair in your grandma's house that's made out of this, stop going over to your grandma's house. <laughs> then since I need to multiply at an alarming rate, we're going to put its litter size up to three. Then we're going to work on the ever-important brain. We're going to turn amorousness way up. Five seems like a reasonable number. Harry Sausage, go to work. They're spreading pretty quickly, so we need to get them turning into something a little more useful. The first thing we're going to do is increase the land fertility, that way they have lots to eat and they can thrive. While also making it quite a bit colder, that way they can develop some fur. They've got tons to eat and love to mate. What could possibly go wrong? If I place one in the water, will it, you know into a water creature? Well, to be fair, it is also dying. I couldn't imagine why. Turns out it's not a water creature. This little guy is currently winded, so we're gonna hit it with a hearty dose of radiation to hopefully start the, you know, evolution process. And I'm pretty sure this one was just born out of that other one, so we're gonna radiate this one too, because the more generations of irradiated creatures we have, the more, you know, amusing effects we're gonna get. Wow, my creatures really covered the world already. Next, I'm going to put a little device that's going to boost fertility by quite a lot. Because if I wanted to wait for evolution to do its own thing, I wouldn't be here. That's a lot of heat. You didn't know those are only supposed to go from 0 to 1, right? Then why would you let me go all the way up to 100 with it? Because I really like the idea of swimming sausages, I've increased the water level just a little bit. Which means that we're probably going to lose a few along the way, but that's natural selection at work. Being in the wrong place at the wrong time in my world doesn't bode well for these creatures. And look, we're starting to get hairier ones. Just what I've always wanted. Seems like a lot of the sausages in this area are turning into meat. And that's okay, because that's going to give everyone else ample opportunity to eat them. Nothing leads a species to greatness quite like cannibalism. I think what each and every one of these needs is a very long and dangerous tail. It's also four times as thick as its own body. That should help it swim if it ever makes it to the water. And it's also going to have a three-part body. Because nothing says I'm suffering quite like three body parts, none of which fit together. I really shouldn't be allowed to play with games like this. I've pretty much just created a giant furry tadpole. And that's definitely not the direction I thought this day was going to go in. Now it just needs some very spiky arms, combined with a few coconut claws. And you know what? Maybe we'll just leave them here until they get here. Coconut thing, I can't wait to see you exist in my world. Might take a little while to get there, considering they're still mostly just hairy sausages. So while I'm waiting for that to happen, I'm just going to hit everything with a healthy dose of radiation, and uh, eventually we'll get some kind of result. Oh, wait, they're already getting nubs. I didn't give them rear legs. Where did they get those from? Did I? I don't really remember. They have legs now. They're honestly so much better off just in this form. I'm sorry, my hairy little friends. There's nothing but suffering from here on out. I'm not really sure what happened over here, but the population seems to have kind of exploded. And I can't really tell if that's good or bad, but this is the result, and I'm pretty happy about that. And not to alarm anyone, but I did radiate a lot of creatures in this area, so this is probably the result of that. I wonder if they realize how lucky they are to actually have eyes. I feel like I might have gone a little bit overboard with the radiation at this point, because I'm not seeing like one species, I'm seeing a whole bunch of different things that don't really make sense. But I guess they kind of do have a common theme overall. Their unyielding love of radiation. I feel like more radiation means more lumps and more racing stripes, and I'm all about those. I'm very much not sure what these things are, but I'm very proud of my creations. 
all right, since we're making some pretty good progress, what we're going to do is select that many creatures, and then we're going to irradiate all of those. Oh, That my. should uh, boost the evolution process nicely, and probably provide these creatures with some light throughout the nights. I'm already giving them lots of history and culture because I've created our very own Chernobyl. What did you just say? All right, morons, I'll see you in a million years. Look at the list of notifications. Species has mutated. Species has gone extinct. Species has mutated. Gone extinct. Mutated. Faster than I can even read it. What the hell happened to that one? I think we burnt this one. To balance out that moderate dose of radiation we gave them, I'm going to increase the land fertility a little bit more. Not because I want to help them, but I need them to survive long enough for my amusement. E.T. over here is so irradiated it's affecting everything around it. These ones over here were potentially the smart ones, going to the far reaches of the world to try and escape my influence. FPS is getting low, we're down to about 5, so there's probably quite a few creatures running around in the world. Not only is this world getting hotter, but so is my computer case. Well, because things still aren't happening fast enough, we're gonna turn the mutation rate up from 0.8 all the way to 8. That should also expedite this whole process. Because currently we mostly just have a variety of sausages. About as many as your local grocery store. Some have two legs, some have three legs, some have no legs. That is one beautiful creature. While we're at it, we're going to take this uh, kind of the breeding center of the world and once again, irradiate. Now that I've forced some diversity into the world, we're going to give it a few thousand years and see what we get. Because not to come off as negative, but you guys are pretty boring. Although this guy seems to have the most diverse body we've seen yet. Not one, but four eyes, two legs that look kind of like pterodactyl heads, and sausage arms. For some reason, my creatures have dropped about a third of the population, but we have some majestic diversity going on. Look at these things. And a golden turkey, and whatever this thing is. Who knew that radiation was the answer all along? I'm pretty sure we have about 1,200 creatures, but I think we have 1,200 individual species at this point. We hit them with so much radiation that everything took its own route. I think this is about as close to my creature as we're going to see. It kind of has the coconut hands and the weird body, but I think the radiation maybe took it on a detour. And that's fine, because my design was more like guidelines than anything else. Evolution is free to take its own course. It's just that while it's on its neat little course, I'm going to steer it off and straight into a brick wall again and again and again. I mean, what even is this? Is this two creatures? Is this three creatures? Is this four creatures? I can't tell anymore. I'm pretty sure this one just gave birth to this one just gave birth to this one. And they're all entirely different species. This is kind of like a zebra breeded with a gorilla that breeded with my hairy sausage. And then got hit by a bus. Pretty sure this is what would happen if you took a zoo and put it in a microwave for 100 years. Look at this! It's king of the sausages! It's basically one of my sausages that just grew sausage arms and a bigger body, and now it wanders around, screaming for someone to put it out of its misery. Well, you think things are weird now, let's irradiate all of these and give them another million years. I used so much radiation that the game broke. It's the strangest thing. If I press play right now, the game crashes. It probably has nothing to do with a million different creatures running around the world, all performing individual actions. So right now I'm just wandering around admiring all my creations while I figure out how to make the game work again. I turned the creature detail down a long ways and that seems to have helped a lot. And you're welcome. Would you really want to see these in HD? But we do finally have some creatures that can actually survive in the water. I was getting worried for a while there because all of my sausages kept sinking. All of these idiots are just baking for a chance at a normal life without the massive doses of radiation. They have no idea it's still only going to get worse from here. Pretty sure it has to, because good luck finding two of the same anything in this mess. So, logically, if they can't breed with each other, we'll just have to mutate them in real time. Hit them with so much radiation that they change without breeding. So, mutation rate 8. T. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Crash number 4. It's literally me versus evolution. I think the creatures are changing so fast the game can't actually handle it. So we'll go with a more modest mutation rate, say maybe 20? And then maybe put it only on times 3 speed instead of 10. The game doesn't seem to love that. And what's the worst that could happen? We've already spent the last billion years microwaving evolution itself. Is this one on fire? Or does it just have so much radiation in it that it's glowing? I just saw its neck get longer. I think it's actually changing in real time. Looking back at the cradle of life, it's amazing how far we've come. It used to just be a million hairy sausages, and now it's all of these wonderful, beautiful, irradiated creatures. Crash number 1 million. And it literally won't even load in now. We've boned evolution so damn hard that it just broke reality itself.